So welcome back friends to a very wet and rainy Friday. Fall has set in. We are running the wood stove 24 hours a day now and I think it's my favorite time of year. I, you know, I, I of course it's, it's nice to have the summer and to have uh, sunshine and nice weather but something about it just is, is I like the change in seasons. I like uh, when the rain comes and the anticipation of watching the snow and being able to look to the north and watch the snow level drop, drop, drop and, and waiting for that day that you get snow on the property. And um, it's just nice to be inside after, you know, summers are so active and there's so much going on. It's not kind of nice to maybe go into that hibernation mode and be by the wood stove and I enjoy it. It's, my, it's definitely my favorite time of year. So a couple things today. Uh, so some folks asked me if I would quickly share uh, the recipe for our bulletproof coffee that we make and we'll do that here right now. And also I wanted to, uh, w there's also been a bunch of confusion about, confusion about the house because we've made some major changes with the living room, dining room. Um, and some of you have noticed that. So I'll give you a quick tour and kind of show you the things that we've uh, changed around and why. And we'll just do kind of a day in the life today. Um, I've also been uh, doing, you know, our three things, getting three projects done. And a lot of those I haven't shared with you because they're, they're just not super exciting. You know, they might consist of painting and caulking holes or fixing this or a squeaky door. And, but I have three things picked out today and we'll, uh, we'll do those together. So uh, let's, uh, let's do a quick tour. Uh, and then we'll jump into the coffee and then we'll talk a little bit about our Friday routine. Today's a high day for us. Uh, the Sabbath is coming this evening and it's a very special time for us and something that we put emphasis on for the family. And um, I'll share a little bit about that with you as well. So let's jump into the, uh, to the switcheroo. I've got a brand new, nice wide angle lens here for you. So you can, uh, we can see, <laughs> see a lot better. I've always been a little bit cramped filming inside the house. So uh, the ma major change that we made is, so when we remodeled the house, we uh, we talked a lot about um, kind of what we wanted, and it was important for us to have a house that's very cozy. Uh, and the styles, I guess, the, what we liked was what we found when we were visiting Sweden. Now, most of you know that Mrs. W's uh, w uh, mother uh, is from Sweden, and we uh, so our home is very much influenced by that, and uh, very light and very um, bright and with lots of just lots of little details you know just things that we like you know we'll, we'll shop together we'll see things we like that we want our home to be um, something i guess that inspires us that we feel really cozy in and comfortable uh, we want a place that's warm and, and comfortable and we want to i guess when our kids leave here we want them to well i guess we want them to come back and to, to have positive memories you know growing up in a place that felt safe and um and where the family could enjoy time together and and, you know, I guess just be surrounded by security and, and love. So what we did was, uh, when we originally uh, did the remodel, uh, what we uh, had our living room right here. And so we had um, a couch, kind of a sectional right there, that we, um, we thought that that would be ideal, because I had this idea that it would be really nice to, in the evening time, to be by the wood stove. What we found was uh, we were... Um, we wanted to, it was really important for us to eat meals together and to have a proper dining room. That's always been something that's been really important to Mrs. W. So we originally had the dining room at the far end of the house over there. And it was so far from the kitchen, we just weren't using it. We ended up just eating at the bar and, you know, just not having, not having those meals together, which was really important to us. It was, I think it's something that um, uh, is missing um, in a lot of families and it's nice to get back to it, sit down, take a little time and eat together. So what we did uh, was we moved everything. We put the dining room uh, right here next to the wood stove and it's just off the kitchen, which is a lot easier for us when we're cooking and preparing. So everything, you know, as the food is prepared and such, uh, we can um, uh, sit, sit here and, and just be closer. We actually use it now. So what I had to do is I ended up having to move the lamps there and put those over the uh, the table and where they were before over here. So let's go over to where the, for, the the room formerly known as the dining room. And where the dining room once stood, of course, now is the living room. So we put uh, we brought the sectional, put it over here, and put uh, I we, we're not super fans of carpet because it's um, it's when you live out in the country it gets so dirty, especially when you have dogs and all that. But you don't always want to be on hardwood floor. So we put a um, a nice big rug right there, kind of where we spend the, our spend our time. So uh, these are um, Mrs. W's gift and I to one or gifts to one another for last Christmas, uh, the Swedish lamino chairs. And so we really enjoy those. Her, uh, Mrs. W's mother uh, had these uh, ha or still have them at their house. And every time we visit over there, I sit them and I think that is the most 
comfortable chair I've ever sat in. So we got, got them for each other. So that's where we sit and in the evening time. Um, and then the kids, usually the sweet loaf is playing down on the carpet and uh, Jack will be over here reading or something on the couch. But it's been, it's re really cozy and nice. And I, I thought that I might miss being by the wood stove, but usually by that time of the day, the wood stove has been burning all day and it's so warm that it's kind of nice to get away from it. It can almost be too, too hot sometimes. Here on the west side is, uh, I, I put these cabinets um, and stuff up. Mrs. W has got a lot of family heirlooms and a lot of things from Sweden and she keeps her linens and family china and different things in there. And it's nice to have the kind of the bench there. You know, there's so many, we have so many electronics and computers and things. I think most families do these days. It's nice to have uh, all the extra plugs and places to charge everything and kind of keep it keep it safe from the baby because she is crawling everywhere now and uh, any type of a cord that she pulls on <laughs> or that's hanging down, she'll pull on and pull it on top of herself. So that's kind of changed uh, a lot of things around here. After we make our coffee, we'll get to our, our projects, but there's a couple here. So two of the smaller ones are, uh, uh, I've got to put the gate up. The sweet loaf, she is on the move. She crawls all over the place at high speed. And, we're, and I saw her the other day, the wood stove, it wasn't, we didn't have any heat in it, but she had crawled up, but was pulling herself up on it and, and climbing on it. It's like, okay, that's not gonna work. So uh, it is a soapstone wood stove, so it doesn't get near as hot as a cast iron stove, but still too hot. You don't want the little ones on it. So we're gonna mount this gate up today and uh, make sure that she's safe. We've gotta cut a bunch of kindling. I have everything ready. For, I like to make sure that Mrs. W has her, her uh, kindling cut so she doesn't have to go out and she, she's not really into the uh, axemanship uh, per se. Uh, so we'll, uh, that'll be two of our projects. So let's get over to our coffee. I'll show you how to make the best cup of coffee you've ever had. If you haven't guessed already, we're, we're dead serious about our coffee. It's a ritual that we, we absolutely love in the morning. Um, well, I guess, you know, we all re it's kind of a regional thing. You know, people from Seattle, Portland, uh, coffee is very, very, uh, we take it very serious. Kind of maybe like Kansas City takes barbecue. Uh, so here's what you're going to need. You're going to need a blender. Um, if you haven't bought a blender yet, uh, the, the two you, you want, there's the two best ones out there, either the Vitamix or the Champ. Uh, they're both really good and you can I think we bought ours used on uh, on eBay you can get them for about half price uh, but that's these things are just incredible this is very important I don't know where mrs. W got this thing or who makes it I'll see if I can find it and put it in the in my Amazon store this makes this beaker deal makes the best coffee I've ever had and I don't know why I mean we've used percolator the regular you know paper percolator deal forever and it just tastes better than this i don't know i don't know why it is it just doesn't make any sense for our beans of course you have to grind your own beans you don't be buying pre-ground coffee uh you want to do your own beans and what we do is we get um, um, a dark French roast and then something, you know, maybe Kenyan or something that's that's a lot milder or a lot lighter coffee. And then Mrs. W will do a 50-50 mix of them. So she'll batch them in these big cur jars or ball jars um, and it makes a really nice smooth coffee. You're gonna want um, this MCT oil. This is, a, the, get the organic stuff. It's a flake, colorless, tasteless uh, coconut extract. Uh, it's a great fat. It gives you uh, lots of energy. You're going to want um, oh, about half a stick or so. This this is going to have to be go to taste. I like lots of butter, so I'm going almost three quarters of a stick of pure organic butter up for two cups. And then you want to you want to have a nice cup, have a big old cup, because we we make 28 ounces and these are 14 ounce cups. So I like these great big wide open cups. That uh, um, I don't know. That's just what we do. We, we we like it. So let's uh, let's grind our coffee and then uh, get going. So I'll start by grinding the coffee. This is not the normal grinder that we use. We we got a really nice uh, Italian one, uh, and uh, well, as is as is uh, the way with Italian things, they work really good for a little while. Uh, and it's in on the fritz. It's in the shop, or I got to take. I've got it in the wood shop. I got to take it apart and see why it doesn't work. But it does make a difference. It grinds the coffee better. But I like to grind the coffee uh, very fine. And what is fine? Well, I guess in like a KitchenAid grinder like this, um, like that, <laughs> it's about uh, 15, 20 seconds or so, just so it's really powdery and fine. I think it tastes better that way. For the two of us, I'm gonna go, I, I'll use three quarters, roughly three quarters of a cube. I, I think what the original recipe calls for is like two tablespoons, which is, that, that's about that per cup, but you have to go off taste. I, I find that more, it's richer and creamier and butterier. Uh, it's very nice. Now with butter, uh, when you buy butter, by law, uh, they can add, manufacturers can add, I think it's either 10 or 20% water 
and that's typically what you get to make it go further. But you can buy, if you look around, that Costco's carrying it now, they've got a butter that is 100%. It doesn't have that water in it. And it's, you're, it's, it costs a little bit more, but it's, it's worth it. It tastes so good. You're gonna cut those into pats and just drop those in your percolator deal. Put your water on so that's getting ready to boil. Now this is where you're gonna put your M MCT oil in there. Just squirt, squirt it in there. I don't know how much, just, just let's say two or three tablespoons uh, of that. It gives it a nice, makes it nice and greasy and good. And put your, your paper filter. These are big, big ones for these guys. These big paper filters, you put those in there like that. Now Mrs. W, she takes it a step further. She actually goes in, um, and rinses this. I haven't found that, I can't tell the difference. Put your coffee in. We put a lot, we, we use quite a bit of coffee there. Just about fill that guy up there, right there. One, one strong cup each. Once your water boils, now this is important. The details are important when you pour in you want to pour in slowly and e uh, evenly all the way across, and, and you'll, you want the coffee to, uh, to, to bloom. Actually, you'll see it, see it kind of swell up. Don't just pour in the center, but you want to really take advantage of all of the, the grinds and just go pour around there small. How we found out about this beaker deal is um, in the, some of the best coffee houses in Portland. Um, they're using these now and we were in there and we saw it and we inquired about it and found out you know where they got them and we got one for ourselves. Uh, and I don't know what it is about it. it. I've looked at it. I've tried to figure out what why the coffee is so good when it comes through here and maybe it has something to do with the way that it it it, fall, it goes down on the outside of the glass. I just don't know. I just don't know. But you'll see there as that uh, that butter fat is melting and you'll get it'll float on top of the coffee the top layer there just keep adding it. My goodness, that smells good. You know, it's so it's fun to enjoy these things, you know, to make a kind of an event out of it. Co I mean, good coffee is one of the great pleasures of life and to have to to do it well. If you're going to have it, might as well do it well, right? So you really enjoy it and look forward to it. Okay, look at that. See all the butter there that's sitting on the top of that? Now we're going to go straight to the blender. These champ blenders are a force of nature. You can make gravel with them. Just pour that all in there. Not too fast. There we go. Cap it, and now we're gonna blend it for, just gonna pulse blend it. This is gonna give it a nice, even frothiness. That's all you need. The smell is just beyond compare. This has, what my granddad used to say, staying power, it'll, I, how do you put it? It'll stick to your ribs. <laughs> I'll have to tell you the story about him and the pancakes. Um, this will definitely stick to your ribs, but look at that. You get that nice frothiness and all the bubbles, a little bit of foam on there. I mean, this right here, ah, that's a way to start the day off. This is a special treat, two cups in one day. Oh, it's so good, that, you got that creaminess from the butter. You've got the, a little bit of just a, that tint of saltiness. You don't want to use unsalted butter. It is, do yourself a favor. You don't need to, you don't need to have that fancy beaker deal. Just get yourself one of those plastic strainers and you can strain it right into the blender too. It, it probably, if, if you were to do it side by side, I probably couldn't tell the difference. I'm gonna, I gotta tell you the story about my granddad and sticking to your ribs. So, <laughs> uh, we were not gonna get to our projects. We'll have to push that up to the next video. So. As I, told, as I said, told you many times in the past, uh, we used to go, grew up in a hunting family. He was, my, my oops, my, <laughs> let me get that. Yep, if that's on sale, I can, that sounds great. All right, bye. This is Mrs. W, so, for, uh, so I was, we'll get to the story. So for, on Fridays, uh, uh, so, uh, Sabbath starts at s sunset on Friday, and what we what we our family does is um, we don't we, no work. That's all family time um, from Friday night set, Saturday, sunset until Saturday night sunset. So we put away you know the work. We don't do any work. It's something we really look forward to. Some we don't always go to church on Saturday. Sometimes we'll go to church. Other times we'll you know sometimes we'll just hang out and just have a family day and play games. You know we don't we, we made the decision years ago not to have a television. So that's been good for us. It forces us to um, uh, we'll, we'll listen to stories on CD or we'll listen to audio books together. We'll we play a lot of board games. We have some really fun board games that we like to play and you know just that sort of thing. Or sometimes you just go do your own thing. Uh, but what a blessing it's been to the family because. 
you know, if you know, life is busy, and if you don't make a, an effort um, to to step back a little bit and take a little time of rest, you find yourself just working all the time. And and what it also does, especially if you have a lot of projects around your house, like we do, and I think a lot of folks do, they nag at you all the time. And we've also found sometimes you just need to get away and that's why the van has been really nice because we can just take off and just drive far drive an hour or so to the north just where there's no internet and we're away from all of the worry of the of the house you know when you're sometimes it's hard to relax and hard to enjoy yourself when all you see when you look around you are unfinished projects so keeping a sabbath day and it doesn't have to be a religious thing. You just if you if you're not a person of faith, do do just incorporate it into your life. What it does is it makes a hard and fast rule um, that uh, we're not, and you have to agree to what those terms will be. We're not going to do it in any work. And what's nice about it is when that day rolls around, uh, you can enjoy yourself. Maybe sleep in a little bit, or you can enjoy your paper, or or your, be on your computer or something in the morning, and just know that nope. We've already decided we're not going to do any work, so I don't care about that the fence needs painted. I don't care that the gate's falling off. I don't care about these things. That's going to have to happen on one or the other. There's six days for working, and there's one day to have off. It uh, trust me. Incorporate this into your family. Um, it'll benefit you. You really it's just it, you'll enjoy it. it. It's just something that you'll really look forward to, and you'll feel better. I think you'll be happier. Your family will be healthier. It's just it's a, it's a great thing. So back to the stick to your ribs. So growing up in a hunting family, my granddad, of course, lived through the Depression. You know, they grew up in Oklahoma. And during the uh, Dust Bowl, they were not able to, 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 they weren't able to farm and to make a living. So the whole family, just like in the Steinbeck book series, load, or book move, loaded up and they um, moved to Sun Valley, Idaho. Uh, and as you know, they worked in the forest and did whatever they, they had to do. Now, this was right before World War II. Um, and so the whole family, kids and babies and women and everything, they lived in wall tents, canvas wall tents uh, in Sun Valley in Idaho. And that's a cold area in the winter, in the snow. That's what they had. That's what they had to do. So it was, it was tough. The boys went out and uh, worked in the forest, logging and cutting firewood. And um, I know Granddad had a kind of a job doing washing dishes or maybe cooking in, in the lodge at Sun Valley. Um, they did what they had to do. So living through that experience... Um, made a huge impact on them, and the granddad was very frugal. Uh, he couldn't stand waste. It was really funny, you know, after that made such an impression upon him when he was young that um, he never he never lost that. Uh, I remember sun, we, uh, Sunday after church, what was our custom, we would always go out to eat, and granddad liked to go to, to buffets, all-you-could-eat buffets. And, I mean, to him it was like, it was an incredible thing because he had went for so many years, um, you know, hungry and without and, and food was short to be able to go to a restaurant and for, you know, pay your $10 and eat all you wanted. Uh, it was, it was a dream come true. And I think he, he it made a huge impact on him and he just loved that. And <clears throat> what was bad was us kids, you know, we didn't live through that depression. And, you know, of course we were a lot more wasteful. And when you go to those buffet type of places, you know how you load up more food than you can typically eat just because it's there. Granddad couldn't stand it. So the poor guy, he not only would he gorge himself on his own food, but he couldn't stand to see food left uneaten, and he'd eat all the food on the rest of the kid's plate too, <laughs> too just so no one wasted it. So fast forward to elk hunting. So, of course, we would had big elk, elk hunting camps. Um, the whole family went, and we would set up uh, these wall tents, and we'd have our sleeping tents. It'd usually be about four guys per tent, and, and then we'd set up a great big huge tent that was the cooking tent. So everyone would come together in the morning and we had uh, all the cooking, the galley all set up and we'd cook and it, you know, they'd cook bacon and pancakes and eggs. I mean, you can just imagine a bunch of hungry guys, you know, at 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning getting ready to go out. I mean, you can, you can put some food away. And of course there was always stacks and stacks of big uh, pancakes. My granddad said, I want my pancakes thick, thick as a horse blanket, you know, <laughs> so they'll stick to your ribs, he'd say. So, of course, you know, not you always make more pancakes than you can eat. So you got that big plate of pancakes and granddad just couldn't stand it. He just thought that was so wasteful. So he would take those pancakes um, and he'd fold them up and he'd put them in his pocket 
uh, shirt pocket, pants pocket. He always wore, wore wool. You know, had to wear wool because it was cold and wet elk hunting. This is, Granddad didn't have any Gore-Tex or anything like that. It was it was wool and canvas type of type of guy, and all day long he'd be eat, eating these pancakes. You know, he and he'd offer them to me. So he'd have you know he'd had I don't know how long many hours he'd have this wadded up, squished up nasty pancake in his pocket, and he'd pull it out and try to get me to eat one. <laughs> he'd be eating those pancakes all day long. Uh, one other story I'll, I'll tell you before we quit. It was funny is so. Um, we decided, I was probably about Jack's age or so, we decided to go to, he wanted to ride um, uh, from Portland, ride 10 speed bikes all the way to the beach. And this was, this was a pretty big trip, you know, 10 speed bikes, you know, they weren't, weren't super high tech in the day. And so we had it all planned out and we bought the bikes and we bought the, the panniers. We had panniers on the back and panniers on the front. And so granddad, right before we left, there was a, uh, he had a pear tree uh, that was uh, just loaded with pears, and he just couldn't stand to leave on this trip without and let those pears go go you get spoiled. And so, he packed the front of those panniers with those pears. And as you know, pears are heavy, and having a lot of heavy weight on the front of your bike, it, it makes it kind of unmanageable. And he was really strugg struggling. I mean, we were a couple hours into it, man. He was eating pears like <laughs> a madman. He was offering me pears like, hey, granted, I don't. I don't want any pears, you know, I can't eat any more pears. And, and it just broke his heart. Finally, we got to the point where we started climbing a little bit and he realized, man, I, I just can't have this 15 pounds of pears in my front bike. So he dumped them out on the side of the road, you know, propped them up where, you know, maybe hopefully somebody would uh, come and take them and they wouldn't go to waste on the side of the road. But I'll never forget those, I'll never forget those pears. He was, uh, he's a good man. He was, a, he was a good man and I, uh, I miss him terribly, so. So that's it, yeah. Uh, so our routine, just quickly, uh, this is a very long rambling video, but um, uh, so fri when Friday comes around, it, it, we start kind of as a day, start preparing kind of early. So what our schedule kind of looks like, so Mrs. W and I will get up usually around uh, 5, 5.30 or so, and we'll have some personal time together and we'll do, have our you know, morning devotional. We'll sit together and have our coffee and you know, do our scripture reading or have a discussion or just have time before the kids wake up. Then the kids will start waking up, and then uh, we'll have, um, at 8 o'clock, we have our family uh, worship. And so what we do is, um, is that I will have something picked out, whether we're reading through the Gospels or something, and I'll read a little bit, then I'll ask questions, and we'll have a discussion. And that can last anywhere from, oh, a half hour to an hour. Um, and we, what we basically I try to do is, is, is how do these stories apply to us today? How can they help us out through the, through the day? And also, what do these stories tell us about the character of God? Those are usually the two points that we want to get across. And and I, you know, pin pin Jack down and pin Mrs. W down, and and you know, make sure that they're involved and, and we talk about these things and we don't hide from anything. Um, we cover the most difficult things, you know, the things that we don't maybe completely understand, or even things that may. Uh, make God look uh, like a tyrant. Um, the way I explain it to everyone is like if there's things you don't understand or things that make God look like um, he's unworthy of, of our admiration and worship, you set those things aside. Um, and then, you know, before, before long, it, it, you'll come across it as you mature more. You'll find out, understand the context, and you'll see why, that, why, that, why it was the way they were. And then I uh, used to, so that wraps up usually about nine o'clock or so. Um, and then um, Jack will go into his homeschooling. Um, we'll lay that out, and that usually takes him anywhere from four to five hours or so, and uh, Mrs. W will do her things, and then usually I'll start working on projects and videos and things. And then um, we, on Fridays, we, um, make it, we have a special meal. Um, as so as we bring the Sabbath in, we have something that we really, really like. You know, it doesn't matter. I don't care about diets or anything that you're doing or restriction or anything. We have something that we really enjoy. So we enjoy making Italian food and we cook it together. Uh, so Mrs. W will usually go out on Friday, uh, go to town and pick up supplies for the week. And we make sure that everything is in place for the Sabbath so that we can really... Um, we really enjoy things. Make sure that the wood's cut. Make sure that the kindling is all brought in and, and that the food is all stocked and we have the things that we need and the laundry's done so that we can have 24 hours of real rest and relaxation and, and enjoy life. Uh, so we'll do a special dinner and we cook it all to dinner. We ha cook it all together um, so that Mrs. W doesn't have the burden and so we're all together and Jack will do his part and I'll do my part. He gets to choose the dessert so we, we don't have sugar in the house anymore so we'll have... Um, 
anything that he wants. So if he wants ice cream or he wants cookies or cake, that's what we'll have that one time on that Friday night after dinner. Special drinks, you know, he likes to have um, the San Pellegrino or something like that, and we'll have special drinks for ourselves. So we really make an event of it and sit down and have a nice meal. Then we'll clean up together. Uh, and then we'll have we'll play a game. We usually will play our favorite game is Catan, so we'll play that uh, until the evening. And then um, so that's kind of kind of our schedule on Fridays. So it's 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 we all look forward to it. We really all, all really enjoy it. And it's it's even better in the winter time, you know, with the wood stove going and when it's not so hot out or not so sunny out. You don't you kind of don't feel bad about being inside and it gets dark early and it's it's nice. It's it's a great thing. So. Yeah, what a crazy rambling video. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one.